Hey everyone and welcome to this Dota 2 beginner's guide on how to play Hoodwink. Hoodwink has emerged as one of the top tier position 4 supports in the current game and the reason for this is quite simple. Hoodwink is incredibly mobile and has a lot of very utilitarian abilities that allow them to essentially aid their team in a number of different ways. Hoodwink can also be played as a core role position 2 mid, which is less common uh, than the position 4 uh, soft support. Hoodwink has also been played as a position 5 support, although that is again much less common and honestly Hoodwink position 4 uh, soft support is probably the best place for her in the current meta. Things change, of course. But uh, the main reason for this is Hoodwink has a lot of utilitarian abilities that allow them to really support their team throughout the game. Uh, one of them is Acorn Shot. Acorn Shot is absolutely fantastic. It's BKB piercing, which means that if someone is spell immune, Acorn Shot can still be cast upon them, and the effects of Acorn Shot can still be felt. Uh, you're getting uh, you know bonus attack range, things along those lines, but the key thing is, is even at level 1, you get a... Uh, 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 basically quarter second 100% slow which can allow you to set up uh, and your teammates to set up additional stuns or crowd control which includes bushwhack. Bushwhack is an incredible ability that provides you with a very significant stun in an AoE space. What's interesting about bushwhack as well is not only at level 4 does it provide a 2.4 second stun which is very significant to anybody in range of the tree but it also it does 300 damage at level 4, which is not too shabby, honestly. A lot of people underestimate the amount of damage of Bushwhack. It can also be used to clear waves and push waves as well. Acorn Shot is also fantastic at clearing waves. Uh, it's one of the benefits of Hoodwink Position 4. You are incredibly fast. You can take, you can go to like where the unsafe kind of areas of the map are and push out waves very successfully using Acorn Shot and something like a Maelstrom, which allows your Acorn Shot to proc the Maelstrom Lightning Chance on each individual bounce. You'll find yourself very often clearing entire waves with one shot of Acorn Shot. So it's a very, very fantastic item. Scurry is uh, very similar to Wind Run by Wind Ranger. And what it allows you to do, it basically gives you passive evasion, which allows you to survive a little longer against physical uh, physical attacks. And it also allows you to scurry through trees and take paths that opponents may not be able to take. It also allows you to set up uh, positions where you can use your ultimate sharpshooter from safer spots. You can scurry into the trees where they can't see you, where they don't have vision, and you're able to set up your sharpshooter and basically hit them for a ton of damage. Sharpshooter is also very valuable because it provides a core break ability. What break does is it disables the passives on a given hero, which is very important because uh, some heroes really rely on their passives like Bristlebacks and Centaurs, Spectres, and others. And we'll talk about them shortly when we talk about the heroes that uh, you can pick against and uh, watch out for. Uh, but uh, the key thing about... Um, Hoodwink is that she's actually a, an agility based hero and what's interesting about that is they actually have a ton of agility gain per level. 3.6 is not too shabby and the result of that is you can often position yourself in a way that you can do a tremendous amount of damage from the position for uh, position. <laughs> uh, but anyways, you also have pretty good stacking uh, across the board in your, uh, you almost get three, uh, three per level in uh, intelligence and two for strength is a little weak, 17 strength starting, you have a really low HP, HP pool, but overall, you know, you offset that uh, with your mobility and your speed. Uh, you have a pretty good attack range. You have a very high base attack time, which basically allows for your base attack is a little slower. Decent attack range, slightly uh, shorter than the average of 600 attack range for most ranged heroes, like, you know, like a Drow Ranger, for instance, or others. Uh, you have okay defense at, uh, you know, four armor starting. Because of your agility gain, you do gain armor very quickly. A pretty decent, uh, and uh, again, pretty... Uh, just she's a fast hero great movement speed right off the bat at 320 and we take advantage of that especially with our item build which we will discuss later in the video she's fantastic at escaping she's a great support and she can do a tremendous amount of damage with her acorn shot and her bushwhack combination especially when utilizing sharpshooter as well and i will provide an example of that in a later clip later in this exact video with that being said let's take a look at the uh the kind of selection sheet the hero selection guide I love doing these because I think that it helps you to kind of visualize how you can be picking uh, Hoodwink and it also benefits you to know if, if Hoodwink gets banned or if she's picked by the other team or double picked. 
you have some other options as well from the position four standpoint. So position four Hoodwink, I like to follow her up with Dark Willow and Shadow Shaman. Dark Willow is my preferred position four if I can't get Hoodwink because they play very similar, very uh, you know hero damage centric and crowd controlly. Uh, and Shadow Shaman is just awesome and can also be flexed into position five as well. But the core thing about Hoodwink you need to understand is Hoodwink doesn't like anybody that interacts with trees. Um, you know. Timbersaw cuts down all your trees, you can't hide. Uh, you know, Mars can use trees to stun you with a spear. Uh, Treant literally uses the trees to hide too, so not very good. Uh, Storm Spear can zip on top of you very fast, catch you and kill you very quickly with their DPS. Tinker uses trees and tree lines to hide and basically uh, cast his abilities and makes it very, he zones you out very effectively. Wind Ranger can shackle you into the trees you're hiding in. Spear Breaker can stun lock you. Uh, Zeus just kills you outright because you have high armor but you have very low HP so the amount of burst damage that Zeus is capable of doing can basically just kill you before you can do anything. Uh, a very, very uh, difficult hero to deal with. Techies often plants his mines within the trees so he can kill you very easily. Nyx Assassin can burst you down uh, and uh, you know deal a lot of damage to you very quickly and you don't have enough health or magic resistance to really deal with that. Uh, Kanka uh, basically can negate your movement with X marks the spot and uh, basically get on top of you, kill you rather quickly. Uh, Darkseer, uh, very fast, very mobile, uh, creates a lot of counter push and is statistically very strong against Hoodwink. Uh, Lena can just basically kill you much like Zeus, 3 spell combo, Hoodwink cannot survive, just simply does not have enough HP to survive the amount of burst damage that Lena is capable of dealing out. Disruptor, much like Kunkka, can basically disrupt your movement by, uh, by glimpsing you back into a prior position which negates Hoodwink's speed. And then finally you have Warlock who's, uh, whose ultimate will destroy trees and basically make it very difficult for you to survive in that given situation. But Hoodwink is very good against heroes that rely on passives. Bristlebacks, well, Bristleback is a passive ability that is broken with Sharpshooter, Hoodwink's ultimate ability. Tidehunter, uh, their, uh, their uh, Kraken shell is uh, broken by Sharpshooter once again. Uh, you also have Axe, of course, with his... Uh, uh, counter helix abilities, which are basically countered by sharpshooter and break. Dragon blood on dragon knight is countered as well. Uh, you have Abba's ultimate will not cast if he's broken, so he can, he just can't rely on it as a uh, as a passive uh, ability to survive. Um, you know you have Spectre who has. Uh, Desolate and Dispersion, uh, two passive abilities that will be disabled with uh, with the break of Hoodwink. Uh, Monkey King, you basically he's hiding in trees all the time, and Hoodwink loves when you're hiding in trees because Bushwhack will take you down. Uh, Phantom Assassin, uh, basically her ultimate and her uh, her vanish are uh, impacted. Uh, her evasion is impacted by the break, and also Huskar, who can be burst down and basically have his passive uh, reduced as well. Uh, also heroes like Anti-Mage, I should even add Queen of Pain here as well, but she's a little more damage centric, so Queen of Pain can technically blow up a Hoodwink, but heroes that rely on like quick mobility like an Anti-Mage, Bushwhack could basically pin that Anti-Mage in place and you can do so much damage so fast to Anti-Mage that you can kill him before he blinks out. Uh, you have Lone Druid who you can be very effectively crowd control, uh, him and his bear can get uh, decimated by Hoodwink. Uh, you also have a uh, Phantom Lancer, who's uh, who's basically who's just a juxtaposition can be uh, broken by Hoodwink's ultimate, and also his. Uh, <laughs> if you have a Maelstrom, the Acorn Shot will bounce amongst all of them and basically just cripple the illusions very fast. And finally, Morphling. Uh, Morphling is an interesting case because if uh, they're farming, you can kind of sneak through the trees. If a lot of Morphlings, especially in their early to mid levels, tend to farm with full agility, the result of that is that you could like sharpshooter them right dead from 100 to 0 HP if they're at full agility as a Morphling farming and they do not realize that you can see them and that you have vision of them and your sharpshooter range is so far that you can shoot outside their vision range. Uh, so you can actually counter Morphlings pretty interesting in the uh, early to mid game and slow down their farm regardless of that okay that is roughly what you're looking out for for hoodwink now let's get into the game and talk about his uh, item builds and skill builds as well all right guys so we're in the demo lobby here let's talk about hoodwink's skills abilities and items now the first thing i need to mention is if you are looking for this guide you can find it as beginner's guide hoodwink by octavarium in the dota 2 client if you can't find it there for whatever reason i've also included links directly to the steam workshop below in both the description and in the comments section to help you guys find it quickly okay now the first thing we're going to talk about here is the skill order now as we discussed prior acorn shot is extremely valuable but there's something 
there's a main reason why you want to go it with your first skill. Uh, a lot of players might tend to go bushwhack, and that's not crazy either. Bushwhack has incredible value, but I do believe that Acorn Shot at level 1 is more valuable, especially for a new player, because you get additional attack range, which allows you to break clarities and, and, uh, and healing salves of opposition very effectively. And that's what you want to do. You want to take advantage of their, uh, you know, their, their misplays, so to speak, as often as you can as a Hoodwink, because you're very fast, you're very mobile, and you have skills that can be very disruptive to the opposite team. You want to take advantage of those things. Acorn Shot, level 1. Level 2, you're going to go Bushwhack. And the reason why you want Bushwhack level 2 and 3 is because what you're going to note is you do get the 1.5 second duration and 75 damage. However, when you go from 2 to 3, you get a very significant jump in damage literally double you go from 75 to 150 and that never replicates right you don't go from 150 to 300 right so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to uh you know level two and three you're going to want to go into bushwhack level four you want to go into scurry scurry is very valuable because of the additional movement speed but also because you get a you literally get eight percent evasion for free Take it. 8% evasion might be the difference between life and death here and there, and uh, it's 8%, but more importantly, you do get that added movement speed so that at level 4, you can very effectively stack ancient camps and rotate to mid. As Hoodwink, you want to be very mobile. You want to be stacking ancients, you want to be helping your mid, you want to be rotating as often as possible. It's one of the benefits of being a Hoodwink 4, that you ha should have a very strong uh, position three off laner who should be able to survive without you in the lane. Okay? From there, you're going to go bushwhack. Level 5, and level 6, you are going to take your Sharpshooter Ultimate. Level 7, you will take Bushwhack again. So, your first 7 levels, uh, levels, levels will look something like this. You'll have one point in Acorn Shot, you will have Bushwhack, you will have Scurry, and then you will have your Sharpshooter. Bushwhack is going to be uh, leveled out first, okay? Because the stun of the damage is too much, man. It's too much. You can literally solo kill enemies with... Acorn Shot, Bushwhack, and a Sharpshooter combination, which I'll show you later on. Um, regardless of that, let's talk about items. Now, the items on uh, Hoodwink are a little unique here. Now, I don't often recommend... I don't often do items like this because, you know... I like to make it as clear as possible. But Hoodwink is a bit of a unique situation. Hoodwink's speed is such a valuable asset. And because of that, I like to really prioritize her speed and mobility and moving between lanes from the mid, stacking and all those things, being a true support while moving very effectively across the map. That's why I prioritize a, uh, a tango and boots. Now, you don't often recommend people go boots first. Boots as a starting item is kind of greedy. You open up with f basically 500 gold right off the bat with your boots. You don't have a you don't have a healing self. You don't have a century. But the nice thing about bounty runes is that you usually get those things in your immediately. And because of your movement speed, you can basically bring your uh, century ward and healing self with your bounty gold and early gold while you body block the enemy. Uh, small camp for the first wave and then once your courier arrives with your sentry you can drop the sentry and block the camp I'll show you an example later on as well but you do want to also get clarities and mangoes you'll probably want one mango mango or two during the laning stage because when you see an opportunity to bushwhack and secure kill if you don't have enough mana it's very problematic so those mangoes can be very valuable you're going to be using clarities throughout the game in order to kind of sustain your mana although by the mid game mana won't be an issue as our build progression for items does provide you with a lot of sustained uh, mana generation from there okay these are your, basically these are your actual starting items which you see here that's why I, I called it early priority items you can't buy them right away because your boots of speed accounts for so much early but once you have this setup here which is provided by bounty gold and you know first wave basically uh, you should be a-okay from there, what you're going to do is you are going to eat your mango, give your carry yourself, you're going to use your clarity, you're going to drop your sentry in the small camp, uh, and then what you're going to do is you're going to build it towards a ring of Basilius, you're going to start with the Sage's Mask, you will also then finish it off with the ring of Basilius if you wish, or what you can actually do, it's up to you, because the recipe accounts for some of the cost, right? It's 250 What you can actually do as well, because you need to build towards your... Um, your Tranquil Boots, you can actually hold off on the Ring of Vasilius. You can actually, let's say you're taking lots of damage, you can uh, get the Ring of Regen first. You can finish your Boots first, and then the Ring of Vasilius. It's up to you. You can be a little flexible with these two, but you are going to want both of these. I do recommend that you go 
Tranquil Boots because of the added movement speed, which allows you to rotate faster. The benefit of the health regeneration will keep you on the map longer. And the items we're building towards will give you a lot of sustained mana regeneration. And a few clarities will do just fine. Uh, from there, you are going to build a Medallion of Courage. The reason for this is, again, you are a position 4. You are very mobile and fast. You actually have high armor because you're an agility-based hero. So the loss of armor isn't that impactful. Though you can generally destroy the opposition by reducing their armor uh, in the early game and then having your team focus fire on them, especially when they're vulnerable with Scurry. Uh, not sorry, not Scurry. Uh, when you basically use Bushwhack here and you lock them down. From there, you're going to want to build a Solar Crest. Solar Crest is simply way too valuable of an item. It has a fantastic buildup from a stat and speed perspective. It gives you everything you want. It gives you even more movement speed, additional mana regeneration, stats, items, everything you need. And most importantly, if you have a right-click centric carry, which you probably do at lower MMR brackets in new player games like PAs, Wraith Kings, and others, uh, it allows you to cast that ability on them and basically completely decimate the... Uh, the opposing team conversely if you do not have a carry like that if you don't have a medusa or anybody that generally benefits from attack speed which is rare but in the case you don't uh you can also cast this on the opposing pa or medusa or whoever and greatly reduce their attack speed and cause them a whole bunch of grief okay from there things get interesting you're a position four you're entitled to some farm and the nice thing about um Hoodwink is that you are very mobile so you can kind of take advantage of some of the unsafe farm your cores might not be willing to take. That's why I recommend you build a Maelstrom. You go Javelin first. Why would you go Javelin first? Why are you building a Maelstrom anyway? Well, the benefit to Javelin and Maelstrom is that your Acorn Blast, well, actually, Acorn Shot, I should say, actually benefits from those proc chances. You can actually proc the Maelstrom on the bounces. Uh, and it, actually, you can proc the Javelin on the bounces. But once you get Maelstrom, what you'll notice here is that once I have Acorn Shot and I cast it, okay, as it bounces, you're getting, you're getting that, uh, that that, um, maelstrom uh, kind of lightning effect and it's extremely valuable to allow you to not only do damage to the opposition but it allows you to go to where like the map is unsafe and like push waves very rapidly uh, one other thing worth noting with acorn shot is if you right click it it becomes an auto cast ability that's something i should have mentioned prior that means that no matter where you cast it it'll plant a tree you can also have it bounce so once the tree is planted the acorn shot continues to bounce the other important thing to understand, and I'll give myself some free skills here. The other important thing to understand, once I get the next little wave of enemies here, is that you can actually cl uh, clear waves with Bushwhack. A lot of players don't realize this, but you can use Bushwhack to clear waves early on, especially since we, we actually spec Acorn Shot a little later. What you can do, Acorn Shot down or get them near trees. You Bushwhack, it'll actually pull the creeps towards the tree as well, dealing the full amount of damage to them as well. So you're doing 300 damage to the creeps, and then you're also proccing your Maelstrom. Fantastic, okay? Now, from there, I do recommend you go uh, Gleipner. The reason why you're going Gleipner here is because you want to create some utility as a position 4. As a position 4 in lower MMR and relatively newer player games, you're going to have games that go longer. You're going to have games where, like, cores are farming ineffectively. And the result of that is you're going to have a lot of opportunity to farm. Because, like, your core is not going to be here. And you can say, well, my core is not here. So I guess I'm taking this farm and I'm going to push this wave out, right? And you're going to be able to buy a little more expensive items than usual. And uh, and Gleepner is one of them. Gleepner, man, I'm not even sure how to say it. But anyways, you buy these out here. You get a Rod of Eidos, which is fantastic. You have a relatively inexpensive recipe, right? And then you finally have Gleepner. And what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to actually lock down enemies in place. So you have enemies here. This is some added utility to your team. Not only can you uh, destroy their armor, but you can actually lock them and root them in place. Uh, the benefit to this as well is that if you lock them in place, they can escape or spread out from your acorn shot, and you can murder them. But anyways, I digress, okay? The idea here is that, uh, you know, you have a whole... Oh, by the way, you have to take the, ne the negative four seconds on Bushwhack. One of the best talents in the game. We'll talk about talents in the guide. But anyways, one of the best talents in the, in the entire game. It's going to get nerfed eventually, but regardless, okay? But yes... I do recommend uh, Gleipnir because it is very effective. Once again, slightly greedy, but you are position 4, you are entitled to some farm, and uh, your cores at the beginner games will be slightly inefficient, which will allow you to kind of farm to these items. Now, if you want to be more support-centric, which you should, you should be buying sentries, you should be buying support items, you should be supporting your team. There's a few items we want to talk about in the optional items. This is the main item progression that I actually really like on this hero. 
But I digress. Let's say you want to, uh, you know, you want you skip the the Gleipnir because you think, you know what, I'm not going to make it to that. We're having a rough game. I'm not going to make it right. Uh, and let's say you're against a slur clockwork or others that require uh, quick repositioning. Buy the four staff. Use it on yourself. Use it on your uh, your teammates. Get that four staff. It's an important item. We know what four staff can do. Yule Scepter of Divinity. If you're against like uh, Legion commanders or others, um, you know people that you have to like kind of like deal with. An axe who who kind of blink calls and everybody. You basically get rid of the axe, right? Any hero that really uh, you know you can benefit uh, from a Yule Scepter of Divinity. Troll warlords a hero you want to use uh, Yule Scepter of Divinity on as well. It's very defensive. Uh, I don't recommend it on Hoodwink that often because you are naturally, you have a lot of escape naturally. Uh, but this can be used as an offensive item, not an offensive item, but offensively defensive. You know, Troll Warlord's coming at you and he ults and you just, you'll scepter him in the air and he's wasting time, right? Perfect. Uh, Glimmer Cape, as Glimmer Cape does, uh, saves you, saves your team. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're kind of vulnerable and you're not, you don't have your security up, you can uh, Glimmer out. Increased magic resistance, very beneficial in this game, especially since you are susceptible to magic burst. Okay, a good item for a good support. Uh, Aether Lens is interesting. Aether Lens is a little different. Um, I'm going to talk about Aether Lens. I'll talk about it now. Aether Lens is unique because it provides you with an opportunity to do a bit of a different combo here. So let's actually get this guy here. So without the Aether Lens, there's a combo that you're not capable of doing. So what you'll note here is Bushwhack has a pretty far range, okay? And you have uh, Acorn Shot as well. Here's the thing. You cannot Bushwhack into Acorn Shot. Yeah. Let me do that again with the... So you cannot do this. It's, you see how like the bushwhack expires before the acorn shot lands? But once you have a... Well, now the tree's there. All right, so with an Aether Lens, you're able to do something a little different. What you can do is you can actually bushwhack into acorn shot, and it looks something like this, okay? What happens is essentially you, um, you're able to get the bushwhack off and have it travel far enough, and the projectile speed of the acorn shot is as such that it'll actually land before the bushwhack lands and what ultimately happens is that once the the enemy even sees the bushwhack it's too late because the acorn shot lands and they're stunned right it allows you to do a very interesting combination as well with regards to optional items you also have spirit vessel which is extremely valuable not only does it give you everything you need additional mana regeneration and whatnot but it also can be used as position four to you know take down the uh, the hp of uh, you know bristlebacks and centaurs and other very tanky targets that have high hp this is a very effective counter to Towards them, uh, also a counter to Morphling as well. Uh, it can also be used to heal your uh, your allies, which is very beneficial, right? Who doesn't want that? It's a great position four item. Finally, what you're going to want to use is Agnum's Scepter. Agnum's Scepter is a lot of fun. What it essentially does is, uh, where's my where's my dudes? Come here, Axe. I need you over here, buddy. Come over. Where's the other axes? Come over here, guys. You guys are okay. Come on over. I don't want your couriers. Come on over. You're the next contestant on who can feed. All right. So, the nice thing about the Agnum's Scepter ability, uh, Decoy, the shard is garbage, don't get it. But right now it's garbage. If it gets, if it gets buffed, I'll let you know and I'll update the, the guides. But anyways, Hunter's Boomerang is fantastic. It provides a 25% magic and status re res like resistance de decrease, which is insane. Let's take a look at it, okay? So you get 2.5 seconds. Just so you can feel what 2.5 seconds looks like with the stun. Look at the acorn shot there. That's what 2.5 seconds looks like. If you throw the uh, the boomerang at them, you're going to hit these guys, right? They're going to have status resistance applied to them. Look how much longer that is. It's 25% longer, in fact. And so the status resistance is absolutely insane. Uh, it, it is like, yes, the increased magic damage is huge too. 25% is 25%. But the status resistance, man, that is so huge because you have a 2.5 second stun. It's so much more stun. It's... 25% more stun. So anyways, um, Boomerang is actually fantastic if you can afford it, if you get to it. Um, it is such a great item. In fact, you're seeing a lot of pro players building towards Boomerang simply because of its capability of changing the game. If you have a Tide Hunter, anybody with a stun, the stun is longer. Any status resistance is just longer. It is a fantastic, fantastic item. It's costly at position 4, but worth it if you can get there. Alright guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about in-game examples. Let's get to it. And for our first in-game example, we have a pro example. We have Position 4 Hoodwink being played by OG Soxa. And what you're going to have here is you have uh, Tundra's uh, mid-player 9 
kind of poking his nose up here at top, uh, the top of the hill here. And what you're going to see is the three spell combination from Soxa as Hoodwink. So you're going to see the acorn shot first to plant the tree, followed by the bushwhack and then the sharpshooter in quick succession. So here's the acorn shot. Here's the bushwhack. Stunned, damaged, bush, and then you have the, uh, the sharpshooter. Now they don't ultimately get this kill uh, on this uh, kind of burst play here, but you can see essentially what the benefit of this three spell combination is. Not only is Lena's bro she's broken, so she's not getting the fire soul stacks, but uh, she took it. I, I, oh, uh, no tail eventually does get her, but uh, like that is a perfect example of how to utilize uh, Hoodwink's abilities as a three spell combination. So once again. You have the acorn shot coming out on auto cast so that the tree is planted first. You have the tree planted. You have the bushwhack coming out. The damage is applied. And once again, right into sharpshooter because you have a steady target. She can't dodge you. She's stunned. She's stuck to a tree. How do you miss this shot? You don't miss the shot. So that is the three spell combination done by OG to illustrate how you can do a ton of burst DPS as Hoodwink. All right, in this example here, I'm going to show you the beginning stages of a game to give you an idea how you can play Hoodwink support in order to give your team the best chances of winning while utilizing this item build that I've, su I've suggested to you, while also utilizing, of course, Hoodwink's strengths, which is her speed, mobility, and her ability to, you know, be everywhere at once, it seems, with how fast she is. So what I'm doing here is at the one minute mark, I'm actually standing directly on the spawn box for the small camp that allows me to prevent this camp from spawning and while my camp spawns as well. What's also important about this to note is, oddly enough, I do have a position three Spectre, which is garbage. Like, Spectre needs to be babysat lane. Like, what are the... Anyways, it happens, right? You can't control what other people pick. Uh, that prevents me from stacking as often as I want. You'll also see that I do have the Sentry Ward coming with my Courier. And what I was doing here, I was also pulling the Wind Ranger away from my Spectre. Because if she just kind of pokes my Spectre nonstop, Spectre can barely do anything to counters, right? So anyways, what we're doing here is you're going to see that I do kind of go do like a little merry-go-round. And I drop the Sentry here. What this does is it blocks this camp. I body blocked the camp first and Wind Ranger saw me body block the camp and also saw that I did not have a sentry in my inventory. I get the sentry delivered out of her vision range and then I drop a sentry here as well. That Wind Ranger is expecting this camp to spawn at two minutes and it won't because now it's blocked with a sentry while I'm showing in lane. So it's a bit of a mind game, right? Block it physically without a sentry, get the sentry outside of vision, drop the sentry, then get back in lane. And, you know, she's way slower than me. She's at 290 movement speed. I'm at 365. And the result of that is your camp's blocked and mine isn't. Let's actually jump ahead here to 7 minutes and 50 seconds. And I'm going to show you how to stack the camps. I, I wish I could have left a little earlier, but unfortunately... The oddness of my uh, my position 3 made it so that I had to babysit my Spectre. I recommend you do this at 2 minutes, at 3 minutes, whenever you can. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to stack these two camps. As Hoodwink, you are so fast. In this particular game, I went Arcane Boots because of my lineup. But with Tranquils and the, the standard build that I showed you, you're even faster. What you're doing here is you're basically going to, at about 53, you're going to pull the Ancient Camp. You're then going to run to the hard camp here. You're going to pull this. We can go a little faster here. You're going to pull this camp here. And then you're going to come out towards mid. Right down this little staircase. And the result of that is that they're going to clear these boxes at the 8 minute mark. And you're going to be able to double stack these camps as Hoodwink. The reason for this is because you're so fast and you have, good, you have a decent enough attack range as a ranged hero. You can multi-stack these all game long. Now in this case, I go towards mid here to help. But uh, the major thing you want to do is you want to stack, then run back uh, to, uh, to your off lane, support more, right? Run to your mid lane to support. Uh, that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm coming to support my TA. There is a double damage rune, and I know that I can help this TA secure a kill, or at least, what do I do? I'm actually, I'm not quite sure what I do here. Let's see. I come uh, mid to help. I'm, picking, I'm saying, hey, I'm here, I'm here, buddy. And of course, I throw the bushwhack. Got the acorn shot. We almost get two kills. Hey, I'm there. I'm helping. I'm supporting this guy. Look at that. Look at this. I also have a self. Come on, Alex. Salve him. Oh, yeah. Oh, broken by the Wind Ranger. Hey, the idea was there. But you can see the benefit of a highly mobile um, hoodwink 
basically I was able to secure this uh, this this kill for the Templar assassin, save their life. I did salve them. It was broken by the Wind Ranger, unfortunately. But ultimately, I'm being very mobile in the lane, and our position three Spectre is farming jungle and should get reported. But anyways, guys, I hope that this guide helped you play, uh, at least learn how to play Hoodwink. There is so much variability to this hero. It's a new hero, and everyone's discovering new strategies constantly, and I will continue to update the guides as required in order to help you guys get the most out of, uh, out of your experience playing Hoodwink. And look at this. Look at Support Alex here, finding the, uh, dropping the Sentry in mid, getting the Sentry Ward down to get rid of the Observer. Again, these are the small ways as a position for Hoodwink that you can help your team be successful. We ultimately win this game. Guys, thank you so much for watching and a very special thank you to all of our wonderful subscribers. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you in the next guide for Dota 2.